Connection with the inspirational word for you. This is the Bishop's Connection to the Facebook family and friends. Oh, woo. This is the Bishop's Connection. Good day to my woo, my Facebook and YouTube family. Welcome back to Bishop's Connection. Before we move any further, I want to wish you a happy, happy new year. And I believe that God has some great things in store for us in this year. Well, if not to hold you long, let's get right into the teaching. Today, I want to encourage you with this thought, focused to finish, Focus to finish. During a Christ day, the socio-political climate was similar to ours due to the Roman Empire occupying Jerusalem. There was unrest among the people. There were fascist groups that opposed the Roman government. In particular, there was a group known as the Zealots. Barabbas, the man released in exchange for Christ's unlawful prosecution and ultimate crucifixion, was a resistance member. It's also a known fact that one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, also was a member of this group. Throughout Jesus' ministry, he was constantly urged by his disciples to do something about the Roman siege of their beloved city. They wanted Christ to set up his kingdom before it's time to overthrow the Roman government. However, listen, Jesus remained focused on his assignment. As a matter of fact, by him remaining calm and collected, Jesus was fulfilling the prophetic words of Isaiah. In Isaiah 50, verse 4 through 11, it contains what's known as the third servant song, wherein the prophet speaks of the Messiah's suffering. In verse 7, the servant expresses his complete confidence in God, declaring that he would not shrink back from his mission despite severe suffering opposition, and humiliation. If you look with us in the book of Isaiah 50 and 7 from the NIV version, the word of the Lord reads, because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, have I set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. You see, flint a tough, dark rock is used figuratively in the Bible to express hardness, as in the firmness of horses' hoofs, according to Isaiah 5 and 28. The toughness of an impossible task, the inflexibility of unwavering determination is described by Ezekiel chapter 3, verses 8 through 9. Set your face like a flint is the figure of speech and the prophets use to describe the Messiah's unwavering determination to persevere in the excruciating task set before him. Christ would endure humiliation on his journey to the cross to die for our sins. You see, beloved, nearly 800 years before it happened, Isaiah foretold the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Isaiah 50 and 6, the NIV version reads, I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting. Luke echoes this persistent image of Christ set on saving his people according to the gospel of Luke chapter 9 
verse 51. The ESV version reads, when the days drew near for him to be taken up, listen, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, Jesus would face arrest, torture, and an agonizing death. With trust in God, the Father, to help and to defend him before his enemies, Jesus set off firmly and unflinchingly committed to finishing his mission. There will be no backing out and no enemy or accuser could deter him from accomplishing his purpose. He has set his face, listen, like a flint. Staying on track in the Christian life requires setting our face like flint. The apostle Paul teaches us to run uh, the race with our eyes on the prize, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. Paul sets his face like a flint to finish his course. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 12 through 14, the NIV version reads, not that I have already obtained all this, or I have already arrived at my goal. But listen to what Paul says. He said, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. He said, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Nothing was more important to Paul than completing his God-given mission, no matter the cost. In the book of Acts, chapter 20 and verse 24, the NLT version reads, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Hebrews 12 verses 1 through 2, the NIV also presents an excellent picture of setting our face like flint. Listen to what he says. He says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. In a compelling sermon entitled The Redeemer's Face Set Like a Flint, Charles H. Spurgeon strongly urged believers to imitate the Lord's steadfast determination. Listen to what Spurgeon said. He said, my great object is to lead you to love him who so loved you that he set his face like a flint in his determination to save you. O oh, ye redeemed ones, on whose behalf this strong resolve was made, ye who have been brought by the precious blood of this steadfast, resolute Redeemer, come and think a while of him, that your hearts may burn within you, and that your face may be set like flints to live and die for him who lived and died for you. You see, despite the travesties and mayhem all around us, I encourage you to be like Christ. Set your face like a flint. Stay on mission. Finish the assignment that the Lord has given to you. 
and leave everything else in his hands. Remember this, man's arm are too short to box with God. Did you hear what I just said? Man's arms are too short to box with God. Focus to finish. Thank you for tuning in to the Bishop's Connection with your host, Bishop Dr. Henry R. Williams. Now, remember to do three things for me. I want you to like, comment, and then share. I want you to share. Let me bless you before we dismiss today's broadcast. May the shalom of God be upon you and your family. Love, peace, and blessings. Remember, I love you and I'm praying for you. I'm looking to see you next week, same place, same time. Until then, may the rest of your week be blessed, prosperous, and filled with the favor of the Lord. See you on next week. God bless you is our prayer. This is the Bishop's Connection with the inspirational word for you. This is the Bishop's Connection to the Facebook family and friends. Oh, this is the Bishop's Connection.